what about you, Mr. Anthony? Uh, as for my success story? Of course. Uh, it's kind of a, an interesting one. I'm really new to the industry. I've actually only been doing, working in animation for, let's see, almost two years at this point. That's about it. My first show, as Sabrina mentioned before, she worked on it as well, it was Animals. And the that way was I, first? That was my first show. Yeah. Oh, crap. Before Animals, I was, I was Uber driving out in LA for a year. And before that, I was in New Jersey, and I was like, uh, Are you still an Uber? What was that? Are you still an Uber driver? You know what? I kind of want to still be an Uber driver every once in a while. I tried to do it on Halloween, and I, my thing expired since I haven't done it for so long, and they didn't let me drive. If anyone catches I would have, anybody? I would have got like driver. five, five hundred dollars. <laughs> Last year on Halloween, I got five. Oh, I got five hundred. Oh wow. It's great, man. Halloween's a crazy night. All right, but it's not about Uber right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just wanted to do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, before before I was out in L.A. Um, doing the Uber for a year, I was back in New Jersey. I was an editor, and I was production assistant, and I did uh, some camera work, not too much. I did a little bit of B camera and some DP stuff, but mostly I was an editor and uh, PA on Jersey. Uh, I also had some other jobs, part-time jobs. I actually taught martial arts for like, I guess, I don't know, seven years or eight years. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That was that was like my main money making job, uh, and I wanted to work in the industry, in the entertainment industry, but I didn't really know how to do it. So I kind of weaselled my way in slowly. But Animals was my first gig in the animation world. The way I got that gig was the production manager on Animals, uh, Andrew Racho, awesome guy. He, um, I stayed with him and his girlfriend at the time, maybe three years prior to that. Um, since I knew his, at the time, girlfriend, uh, from an animation convention I went to, uh, probably 2009, CTN Animation Expo. Yeah, it's out here in Burbank. Yeah, so I just recommend going to conventions, meeting people. Um, it was kind of the thing I did on a whim. So, uh, 2000, maybe not 9, maybe let's say 11, I don't know what it was. I think it was 2011. I kind of flew out to Los Angeles from New Jersey on a complete whim. I had an idea for a cartoon that I had that I was making. I drew up a really primitive pamphlet with horribly designed characters all by myself. It was like a threefold pamphlet. I had characters on one flap. I had environments on another flap. I had story ideas. It was a disgusting looking thing. I hope it never sees the light of day. But I designed it myself and I took it to the CTN Animation Expo. Flew there on my last dime. Maybe not my last dime, but I'm being I'm exactly You're embellishing. I'm, embelli- the story. I'm embellishing a little bit. <laughs> I flew there in rags. Uh, I believe that. Yeah, so I got to um, the CTN and I was just kind of walking around trying to meet people, make connections. Because I knew I loved animation. I knew I wanted to work in the entertainment industry. Uh, so I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of went there, threw my pamphlet at everyone that would look at it. And I threw it at this uh, young woman named Scout Raskin, who happens to be. The production manager on Rick and Morty right now for season three yes. for season three uh, I threw it at her and I flew back to Jersey with no luck I thought oh you know at least I met people and made connections about a week later she called me and she's like hey I like this I want to help you make it and I'm like what really this shitty thing okay so uh, we developed it and eventually we became good friends uh, I flew out to LA I stayed with her just to kind of hang out and meet people out here her boyfriend at the time happened to be Andrew Racho who um, was the production manager on Animals. And then fast forward three years later, I officially moved to LA, uh, not just kind of staying on a whim. I officially moved here, I got all my stuff, I hopped on a Greyhound and I packed a bag, went to LA, gave everyone about two weeks notice that I was leaving. Um, I stayed. At, I was staying with Scout again uh, and Andrew Racho called me. He's like, "Hey man, you want a job on animals?" Didn't you say? <laughs> didn't you say that you actually met um, Mike and Phil, uh, the creators of Animals? Oh yeah, like, that, that goes back to Uber. It's kind of yes. weird. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it kind of circles back to Uber. So Andrew Racho was nice enough to help me get a job on animals. Um, just a connection that I had, which I was really lucky to have. But as far as the creators of animals, uh, Mike Luciano and Phil Matteris, uh, I gave them an Uber ride completely coincidentally that's such an LA story about maybe four to five months prior to getting that job they didn't remember me I didn't remember them were they hammered just kidding but (laughs) they probably were but when I went in there and I started looking at the art and I was thinking wait a second this story it sounds really familiar because in the uber 
they actually told me about their cartoon. Either they just sold or they were trying to sell. I forget what the story was. But they told me about their cartoon about animals living in New York City. And I actually, later that day, maybe the next day, I looked up their like primitive shorts that they made prior to the show. Like they were maybe five minute or three minute shorts. And they were embedded in my brain. So fast forward again, six months later, I'm there for my first day at the job. I'm looking around at the art. I'm like, where have I seen this before? And then I make the connection that I gave them an Uber ride, like a, uh, five, six months prior to that. That's so. Funny. And they were, and after I reminded them, they remembered me because I have like, I had like stupid signs in my car that said, the candy "Grab sign. some candy." That's so and creepy. Like, Yo, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was pretty creepy. <laughs> now that I think about it, you have a candy sign. I still, you know, what's even creepier I have some candy. is I still have it, even though I don't. <laughs> Yeah, don't I noticed. I, I, didn't I take some the other day? <laughs> That's the creepy part. I was like, Starburst! Yeah, I should probably take that out of there. How now. old are those Starbursts? Halloween. Yeah, it's Halloween. Yeah. Let's go with that. Uh, yeah, but that's that's more or less, I know I kind of jumped all over the place, my quote-unquote success story, is I just made a bunch of connections early on. Um, I kind of just followed my heart. I flew out here with almost nothing and no plan. Just wanted to be involved in it. And eventually, uh, I got a foot in the door, and I just kept riding that wave. Yeah. Well, the thing that all three of us have in common is just the connections. Like, yeah. all three of us got our first gigs based on a personal connection that we had. I mean, we, yeah. the two of us went through school, and Anne just kind of came out here on a whim. Funny story. I didn't really. Animation. I didn't really get that internship through anybody. I actually was coined for that internship. Coined. But everything after that, yeah, I had some sort of connection. Oh, you mean the one that you submitted for Cartoon Network? Yeah, yeah. it was literally I. Just just like my resume was amongst many and they just just so happened to pick my resume but i didn't know anybody at cartoon network that, that could give me like a, a foot in or something until like would well, you mention but you mentioned nick gave you the website site yeah he gave i mean but he didn't rec like he didn't recommend me over okay. there you know what i mean Sorry. like he gave me the website to to like know where to sign up and everything yeah but um but then like after that like my first job i know um my, the producer of uh grandpa she was best friends with one of uh, my teachers um from uh, college and this teacher loved me so okay thank god Ooh. be nice to your teachers hubba, hubba. like i know some some of them can be annoying but still be nice to them yeah be nice um, to your teachers meet people talk to people respect everybody we're gonna take a quick break um and fix some technical problems we'll be back in one minute cool <laughs> And we're back. Uh, sorry about that. We this is our you know we're getting our sea legs still on podcasting. We're figuring out how all, our, all of our equipment works and whatnot. But I think we're good. I think we're back. And we were in the middle of a conversation about. I know Brian was talking about what he did. Sabrina was talking about what how, what she did. And then I was in the middle of talking about uh, my quote unquote ass animation success story. <laughs> <coughs> um, let's see. Someone will remind me where I left off. You talked. Uh, you basically said. Um how you got your job on animals, which was your first job. Oh, right. I got my job on animals through a friend, through connections, um, and through moderate talent. Very small. Um, and then through from animals, I pretty much learned... I, I kind of used animals as an experience to learn what I needed to do to do my job. You my were official, great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> my official title on animals was a design coordinator. Okay. But... Um, I didn't, to be honest, going in my first day, I had no idea what I needed to do. I had no clue. Um, the person who hired me, who helped me get the gig, said, hey, if you know some Photoshop and you can, you're a relatively organized person, you'll be fine. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, basically, within a week, I figured out what I needed to do. I was lucky enough to have um, another design coordinator there with me who basically taught me the ropes. But strangely enough, after two weeks, he ended up quitting. <laughs> I remember uh, that. And then we got another design coordinator to help me out as well. So it was two of us coordinating the show, and uh, she was just phenomenal. Everything I know about coordinating a show, I learned from her. She's just the best. Um, from and then from animals. As soon as since I basically got my sea legs on animals and I figured out what I needed to do, I was asked uh, through the Starburns family to move on to a show called uh, Harmon Quest, uh, season one. Um, and I was the only coordinator on the show, and I basically got to organize it my my way, and it went incredibly smoothly. And then from there, 
I was asked to move on to Rick and Morty, since Rick and Morty is pseudo-associated with uh, Starburns. Yeah, we all kind of bounced around. From yeah, shows. Rick, Rick and Morty, Morty is n- no longer with Starburns, but at one point, Starburns oh. and Rick and Morty were all yeah. the same. Really, the same building through the first two seasons, but only a f- a f- officially associated for season one. Yeah, and when on Rick and Morty, the first season went on hiatus, like all of us kind of migrated together to these shows. Like, Even after season two. Oh, sorry, season two. I'm sorry, yes, season two. So, because of the long hiatus. So, yeah, and we all move around in groups. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then after, I believe it or not, as we said in the beginning, we all work on Rick and Morty right now. Brian's the director, I'm a coordinator, and Sabrina is a character designer, character cleanup. Um, but this week is actually upcoming weeks, my last week on Rick and Morty, because after that, I'm moving on to Harmon Quest Season 2, which is going to be a lot of fun. If you liked Harmon Quest Season 1, you'll probably like Harmon Quest Season 2. I'm hoping I get to follow you. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> it's a good time. You're going to be design coordinating on Harmon Quest yes, Season 2 as well? I'll, I will be. I'll be a production coordinator. I mean, I'm officially a design coordinator, but looking at like what we're doing on Rick and Morty and the coordination at, uh, end of things and what I did in Harmon Quest and Animals, like every show, the what a coordinator's duties are slightly different. And I definitely have the most responsibilities on Harmon Quest just because it's such a small production staff. It was literally three, maybe four production people on Harmon Quest, whereas Rick and Morty has like four, five, six, seven. And, and there's something I want to say to that. Like, you look at the quality behind Rick and Morty, not just the talent involved, but the amount of people mm-hmm. are involved in the show like, like that. For sure. There's a lot more money involved versus Harmon Quest. So you can tell, like, it's a limited production. And part of oh, that is, like, time. you have to, like, make certain concessions. Yeah. Stylistically and just on the production. End. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a way, way smaller budget than Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty right now is Adult Swim Golden Child. Yeah. You know, like... It, it, not, not the Eddie Murphy movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the Eddie Murphy That's for the old people in the audience. You guys know what we're talking about. That was a good movie. Actually, no. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Right. Not the best. Um... But I was going to say uh, about Rick and Morty versus Harmon Quest. I know right now Harmon Quest, you know, they're the most popular show on CISO, which is basically like saying you're um, the smartest guy with a brain injury. It's really, you know, not no one really watches CISO, unfortunately, but it is the, the most popular show on that channel. By the sure. way, if you don't know, CISO is a comedy streaming service. Um which is like a rival to Hulu, Netflix, that kind of thing. It's only three or four dollars a month, and it's all comedy. You get, you get, uh, what do you get? Like all SNL, all Monty Python, that kind of stuff. A lot of sketch shows. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's free trial content. for thirty days. We yeah, they're not sponsoring us, but if they want to, if yeah, you want to watch Harmon Quest, out, there's I just, a free trial. I, uh, <laughs> admittedly, I need to. I have not watched yeah. Harmon Quest. It's a pretty cool show. I mean, if you like Dungeons and Dragons. If you like, um, I do. I like those. Like improv. If you like improv. If you yes. like animation. If you like Dan and Dan, uh, Dan Harmon and his, you know, escapades his podcast, and shenanigans. Uh, his podcast crew. I love it. Yeah, his um, whole Harmontown. Oh, Harmontown yeah. yeah, those are all Harmontown. Oh yeah, people. I've been to a few Harmontown. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Essentially, it's it's um, that last bit of Harmontown where they play D and D. It's stretched out into like a half hour show. Right? Mm-hmm. Spencer. Spencer's the best. Maybe That's we can show. interview Spencer. Yeah. Later. He's a weird guy. He, yeah. he'd do it. I think he'd do it. Yeah, Spencer should do it. That'd be fun. Cool. We'll so I mean, D&D at the end of that one. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially my story, more or less abbreviated, and a lot of just mumbling over myself as well. But that, more or less, that's it. You know, connections, and then just riding the wave. That's how it works. Should I do the intro again, or are we good to go? Oh, great. Oh, there we yeah, go. Cool. Let's okay. go. So there was an intro, and then there was about 45 seconds to a minute of awkwardness. <laughs> that will serve as our musical intro today, just us rambling about running. Uh, and now, here we are.